Is everybody able to see my slideshow? Yes. Good evening, everyone. We're just going to wait for a few more people to join us. We have quite a few people registered for this evening. We want to give everybody a chance to jump on. Currently at 46 attendees out of about 130 who are able to register. I know that WebEx can be a frustrating uh, application at times. Still seeing that number of attendees go up. We'll wait another minute or so. So welcome everybody. We have we have quite a few people registered for tonight's meeting. Uh, I'm looking forward to the conversation about 900 Lakeshore Road. Um, there's still more people signing on, but I think we'll start here. Um, welcome. Uh, we have many neighbors joining us for tonight's meeting. Uh, so far, we have 65 people out, uh, which is a great turnout. Uh, I thank each of you for being able to join the conversation tonight. My name is Ryan Fopney. I work with Councillor Tejo and I'll be the host for tonight's meeting. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the lands which constitute the present day city of Mississauga as being part of the traditional and uh, treaty and traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Huron Wendat, and Wyandot Nations. We recognize these peoples and their ancestors as peoples who inhabited these lands since time immemorial. The city of Mississauga is home to many global indigenous peoples. As a municipality, the city of Mississauga is actively working towards reconciliation by confronting our past and our present, providing space for indigenous peoples within their territory to recognize and uphold their treaty rights and to support indigenous peoples. We formally recognize the Anishinaabe origins of our name and continue to make Mississauga a safe space for all indigenous peoples. I'll now take a moment to walk through tonight's agenda. Tonight, we'll quickly go over some housekeeping and how to take part in this meeting. We'll hear some opening remarks from Councillor Tedjo, and we'll hear briefly from um, staff from City of Mississauga's Planning and Building Department. I'll then send it over to uh, our developer, where they'll share their plans for the community, and then we'll have one hour for clarification questions and discussion. We'll then wrap up this meeting. I will now walk us through some of these housekeeping items. Tonight's session is being recorded and will be posted on the counselor's website, alvintejo.ca, should you want to rewatch it or share it with somebody who is unable to attend tonight's meeting. Uh, we'll have one hour for discussion and clarification tonight and can continue the conversation if needed. We have found it most productive if these conversations on this platform happen when we get to hear your question. So we prefer that you save your questions and comments for the discussion periods. During the question and, uh, question and answer session, please raise your hand and I will unmute you. You can ask your question or provide comment to the developer. We won't be addressing uh, questions in chat immediately. We will take them and we will address as many as we can during our discussion period tonight. It is important to me that we take time to have a respectful, and productive discussion tonight, and I will do my best to make sure that those who want to provide feedback get a chance to do so. However, if we are unable to get to your question, I will ask that you follow up with Councillor Tejo, and we will answer it directly. 
You'll make sure to post counselors, uh, Counselor Tetch's contact information in the chat at the end of the meeting, or you can find it on alvintejo.ca. These kinds of conversations can be difficult, but we must remain respectful. When asking questions or typing in the chat, I ask the humane respect towards everyone giving their time tonight. Disrespectful or aggressive language will not be tolerated this evening. With those housekeeping matters out of the way, I would like to invite uh, Councillor Tejo to say a few words. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, good to see so many friends and neighbors uh, on the call today. Um, excited to help uh, facilitate this meeting um, uh, between the applicant uh, and and our residents uh, and neighborhoods. So, you know, just understanding where we are in the process, uh, the applicant has. Uh, done their first initial um, phase uh, step through and really this is the first and important opportunity for residents to provide feedback and share any uh, thoughts questions concerns uh, with the applicant as they work through the process now there is going to be uh, other meetings as we go through the process this is again at the early stage of the application process whether they'll be um, virtual like this or at city hall uh, there'll be other opportunities for you to engage. Your questions today or your comments uh, are very important and they are part of the process um, that are tracked um, uh, by staff uh, as uh, as the application moves through. Um, just wanted to you know say hi to everybody and, and really thank you for your engagement and participation in this meeting. Um, we know we're always all here trying to make sure we're building the best community we can and uh, your input is valuable on that. And uh, if I don't get to see you uh, at some point, I wanted to say happy holidays and Merry Christmas. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks, Councillor. Uh, before we pass it off to the team from Red Hunter Lakeshore Road West, I'd like to invite Paul Stewart, development planner for this project, to say a few words. Good evening. My name is Paul Stewart, and I'm a planner with the Mississauga Planning and Building Department. The purpose of our meeting this evening is twofold. First, it's to inform you, the residents, about what the owner of 900 Lakeshore Road West is thinking of doing on their property. Secondly, it's for the city and the property owner to hear your initial thoughts and identify issues that should be addressed when the application is ultimately submitted and reviewed. But before we get to the potential development, I just wanted to give you a couple of, uh, a little bit of an overview about the planning process in Ontario. Now the Planning Act allows any person in the province of Ontario to submit a development application to build or change the use of their property. However, the municipality, and if there's a dis disagreement, the Ontario Land Tribunal have the responsibility of approving or denying the application. I just wanna reiterate that we haven't received an application yet. And the reason we're having this meeting is that the city requires the property owner to work with your counselor to hold a community meeting before they actually submit their application. Now, once the application is submitted, the city will, re, uh, once the application is submitted along with its plans and required studies, we require the applicant to post a notice or a sign on the property advising of their proposal. The city will also send a notice out to all residents who live within 120 meters of the property, advising them of this application. The city will then post all the information that's submitted, all the plans and all the background studies that, are, that have been submitted with the application so that the public can review them. This will be posted on our website. The public is then able to submit their comments to the city, identifying their issues or concerns. And the city then circulates all the information that's been submitted to relevant agencies and departments and we try and resolve any issues. Once this circulation has been done, staff then prepare a recommendation report that goes to the Planning and Development Committee, who will make a decision and then which goes to Council for endorsement. The public can also attend and make comments at the Planning and Development Committee. Now, if the developer disagrees with the recommendation or if a member of the public that's made a submission uh, disagrees with it, the application can be appealed to the Ontario Land Tribunal, who will make the final decision. 
Once the official plan and zoning amendments have been resolved, the re, uh, any redevelopment of this property still is likely to require a site plan approval and a building permit review. So we are really at the beginning, the sort of the first quarter of the development process for this site. In conclusion, there have been no applications submitted and no decisions made. Please watch for a sign to go up on the property or, and look in the mail for a notice advising of when the application has been, uh, been submitted. Once the application is submitted, the city welcomes your comments so we can identify the or confirm the issues that need to be addressed when uh, reviewing this application. That completes my comments. And at this time, I'll turn things over to the applicant who can explain their rationale or what they're thinking about for redevelopment of the site. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. And uh, with that, I'll hand it over to the team from KFA Architects. Okay, excellent. Uh, Ryan, are you able to hear me over here? Yes. Okay, great. Nope. All right. So I'd like to thank uh, Councillor Tedio, Tedio and the, uh, the Councillor's Office for setting this up, as well as planning staff for working with us. And just um, I'd like to welcome everybody coming on to this meeting. Uh, as, as stated just now, we are uh, KFA Architects and Planners. My name is Costa Dervish. I'm an urban designer and planner on this project. And I'm, I'm joined by uh, my colleagues, uh, Craig Fordyce, who is an architect and planner, and Vlad Taminski, also an architect and planner. Um, so we're, we're very excited to um, uh, present this proposal to the community for an official plan amendment and, and zoning bylaw amendment at uh, 900 Lakeshore Road West. And I just want to uh, quickly do a few uh, introductions before kind of jumping into the uh, presentation. Uh, just firstly, the, the uh, ownership team. So the, the site is co-owned by um, Ryan Atkinson and uh, Sunny and Nikki Yashpal. Um, they're co-owners uh, on the project and they've worked together previously um, on a project uh, currently under construction at 1444 to 1458 uh, Contra Road. And that's, uh, that's in Mississauga. And they've worked with us on that. So uh, we're, we're, we're familiar and we have worked together. So just wanted to um, uh, state that. Uh, the structure of our uh, meeting will first uh, introduce the site. Um, and then in section two, we're, we're going to run through the planning and policy framework, uh, which we've reviewed to uh, kind of take our initial um, kind of review and, and determine uh, due diligence of the, the site. Um, and then we're going to speak to, in section three, uh, spatial planning guidelines that we've generated, which we feel um, take all of that policy and, and, and planning um, from the region and the city and, and integrate those, those things with the urban design and architectural aspects of our uh, proposal. And we, we feel like, uh, and that is section four. And, and, um, and section five, we're gonna, we're gonna round up in a, in a Q and A um, period, like the, the uh, 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 planner had, had stated. So firstly, um, I just want to introduce our site, uh, which is irregular in shape and it's located on the south side of uh, Lake Shore Road West. Uh, our site's located in, in the uh, Clarkson Lauren Park neighborhood, um, uh, designated neighborhood uh, between Whittier, Crescent and Ivor Way. Uh, the lot area itself has an, uh, approximately 4,700 square meters uh, in area and has 130 meters in, in frontage. Um, and is uh, designated as neighborhoods uh, within the Mississauga official plan and located along the corridor and adjacent to the green system uh, per, the, uh, per the official plan. Uh, the zoning uh, is uh, currently zoned as R2 exception five. 
So very quickly, just want to give everyone a um, high highlight of uh, our site. Um, we're, uh, the, the view uh, uh, from Lakeshore looking east uh, shows our site as having a tree frontage and direct access to the uh, multi-use path trail. Um, looking further into the site, we have an, uh, an ancillary uh, structure with, um, with, a, with a foundation and the, the principal structure, which is a single detached house and um, a swimming pool beyond that. Uh, to the rear of the site here, we, we, we can see the decline uh, moving closer to the, the, the swamp area and marshlands and the ravine um, and the swimming pool right in front of us. And um, uh, looking uh, along Lakeshore Road West, looking west, uh, we see the existing primary residence and access to the multi-use path and the change in elevation that occurs. So in section two, we want to speak to the planning and policy framework. So um, we've reviewed the planning and policy framework and, and uh, uh, in, in terms of uh, what is stated coming down from the, the provincial policy um, statement and the growth plan, um, uh, which states uh, in order to take advantage of existing and planned infrastructure and servicing for the creation of complete communities um, through the um, uh, and, and, that's, and that's what the mandate is coming down from the, uh, the policy there. Um, we've also reviewed uh, Region of Peel and uh, City of Mississauga official plan um, policies, as well as the um, City of Mississauga strategic plan, which kind of gives um, a more um, projected visionary um, idea of what uh, development can look like um, uh, moving forward. Um, it, it, the, the next slide shows what the, the, the uh, City of Mississauga strategic plan, and that basically outlines priorities um, in, in, through a set of five strategic pillars, um, and those are to move, belong, connect, prosper, and living green. Um, and we felt this is helpful um, in terms of um, focusing on, focusing in on a. a uh, a document which is which is you know delineated by and, and highlighted by staff put forth by staff uh, which kind of projects a future growth to the city um, and and currently uh, takes that takes us um, that policy from the official plan and you and integrates it strategically and how how these policies are actually going to form uh, um, communities moving forward um, so the, uh, both both uh, the local official plan and the strategic plan were important um, documents uh, uh, in moving forward in drafting our proposal. The, the official plan describes uh, Mississauga's urban system as a combination of three distinct but interconnected components, and these exist as um, corridors city structure and green system. Uh, our site is outlined in um, the, dotted, uh, the dotted red circle in between the two um, uh, uh, purple areas on the map along the corridor. Uh, and in behind it, you can see a hatched green area, which, uh, or, which all over the map are referred to as green, the green system. The official plan also um, delineate, delineates our site as being located within the Clarkson uh, Lauren Park character neighborhoods. And uh, we have um, reviewed that in the Mississauga official plan review, um, the city anticipates, and this is a directive from, from, from the province, that these char character neighborhoods will be required to provide um, 15,000 units of housing to meet the uh, 2051 population targets. Uh, we also note that the plan states that new development should be compatible uh, with and enhance the character of this neighborhood. And, and uh, as such, we've made this a theme um, of neighborhood enhancement, a central one of our proposal, and, and we'll, uh, we'll go into that further in, along in the presentation. 
The official plan uh, land use schedule designates uh, our site as residential low density one. And uh, as such, we'll require an official plan amendment to designate the site as, as high density. Um, slide 16 uh, delineates uh, or, or, or shows, illustrates what the, what the uh, zoning, uh, the, the current zoning um, uh, envelope is on the site. And uh, just quickly uh, going into that, the site's immediate zoning context is made up of residential, open space, and green land zoning categories. Our proposal uh, will require a zoning bylaw amendment application to rezone uh, the property from R2 exception 5 uh, to residential apartment 3 or RA3. Um, the residential apartment uh, uh, zoning uh, label currently permits heights of up to 12 stories. Uh, but our proposal would only seek a 10-story uh, height permission. So moving into section three, um, uh, we wanted to explain our office's approach to this idea of strategic spatial planning uh, and, and the, the spatial planning guidelines that we've generated for the site. Um, we use spatial planning as a guideline uh, uh, to respect or a tool to respond um, to to policy um, to better integrate you know the, take that policy and integrate it into the the architectural design and urban design elements. So taking that text, taking what the text says about you know livability and and height and and environmental um, aspects and integrating that into the the, the actual architecture um, of the proposal. Um, we feel that this is, this is a more spatially focused approach than what is typically provided uh, for development proposals. And, and we feel that it has a, you know, the ability to allow for creative solutions and respond better to the existing environments of the site and, and, and the context. Um, and, and, and that it, this additional layer of research uh, and spatial design can, can provide the community with confidence that what is being proposed uh, integrates properly with what city planning staff see as desirable um, as a desirable growth model for the neighborhood and, and for their planning policy and vision. Um, so, so with that, we've developed the, the following spatial planning guidelines by weaving themes of connectivity, uh, the urban build form and the natural environment um, within the five pillars of the strategic plan and sort of a cross scale um, uh, 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 method uh, in order to speak to this kind of um, complex way of, of uh, determining these spatial qualities. So generally, uh, we've, we've uh, observed two themes uh, within this approach on our site. Uh, this, there, we, we understand that there does exist an east-west pattern or, or axis um, that should focus on integrating uh, the existing build form uh, with what exists now within the neighborhoods and the planned developments along the Lakeshore Corridor with the planned modes of transit and connectivity um, on either side of the community. And uh, these exist as the Clarkson Village and Port Credit nodes, which you can see on your screen in the two um, red kind of uh, concentric circles. Um, uh, and, and the second is the north-south pattern or axis. And th the idea of this is to integrate the various kind of existing and planned for paths of movement uh, within the natural system and better connecting the community with the waterfront, the ravine system, and uh, the existing Great Lakes path, which runs all along uh, Lake Ontario and runs along Lakeshore in front of our site as well. Um, so we, we definitely wanted to keep that in mind. So with that, with that kind of overview of those two uh, kind of high level um, pat patternings that we've reviewed, uh, we, we wanted to give a, a, an introduction to our site within that context. So we feel that our site is located in between two urban nodes um, uh, or two towns, the Clarkson Village and, and uh, Clarkson Village and Port Credit. And obviously you can see that in, in the map on, on the left-hand side with, with both nodes. Um, uh, we feel that these two focal points um, of existing residential mixed-use uh, um, uh, 
have an existing development intensity that move in a, in a, in a direction towards our site. Um, and uh, this, this horizontal axis kind of provided us with an understanding of the current kind of development patterns and, and pressures currently felt by the nearby community and our site as well. And, and, and in order to kind of understand it and respond to those, those um, kind of pressures and occurrences. So on, on this slide here, um, we, we wanted to show, you know, an understanding of how we integrated within, within this current um, uh, 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 development pattern. Um, so if you look at the center map, uh, it illustrates how development activity is currently underway at, at, in the two nodes. Obviously, the, these are just illustrations, but they're uh, uh, numerous development applications where wherein the inward pressure is layered with an already diverse amount of existing housing types uh, if we're moving more centrally into, into the neighborhood um, that 900 Lakeshore exists in. Um, and, and we do understand that, you know, it's a varied um, uh, uh, kind of housing typology. There, there exists a range of housing stock from single detached to uh, dwellings to townhomes. Um, but uh, that the development on our site um, in relation to those pressures should be realized in a con context sensitive approach to intensification. Um, and the idea of this context sensitive approach is to provide, you know, the existing neighborhood uh, th that's surrounding the site with, you know, an enhanced housing options uh, that, that don't currently exist within those neighborhoods. Um, moving forward um, on this slide, uh, we wanted to illustrate um, our proposal um, with uh, being located with, with, along the corridor within the, 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 the center of those two nodes. And this view um, shows Port Credit um, as one of the towns in the background. These two nodes um, uh, are also designated as existing and potential mobility hubs in the forms of major transit station areas, uh, which have their own plan planning frameworks for increased growth and transit. The site's location along uh, Lakeshore Road uh, is currently uh, being serviced as well by um, uh, its exclusive bus uh, routes, which is the 23 My Way. Um, and uh, we also would like to note um, that uh, there, there is an ongoing uh, planning study in the area, which is the Lakeshore Complete Street Study, uh, which has an aim to improve transit connections for users located within our site and the neighborhood uh, who are traveling along Lakeshore Road in between these two nodes. And we understand that currently the, site's on, the study is ongoing um, but the plan is um, to see upgraded bike lane infrastructure uh, along with other um, connect connective uh, mobility enhancements, um, which are to be determined. And uh, th that study would directly inform the mobility um, aspects of our, our proposal as well. So, um, Given the planned transit upgrades within the MTSAs uh, and along Lakeshore Road and the, and the development pressures radiating from these two nodes, uh, we, we wanted our site uh, to, to show an integration between kind of an enhanced housing form within the neighborhood um, that could be summed up uh, by using two concrete approaches or examples. Uh, one, the, uh, by engaging with the Lakeshore corridor through use of a complete street uh, through, through the use of complete street principles along the build frontages and plan for bike lanes. And this would be done by orienting the buildings towards the street and providing for a more welcoming pedestrian environment. And the second is encouraging uh, use of uh, transportation through on-site um, bicycle infrastructure and taking advantage of the existing bus network and future uh, planned transit um, uh, at both of the GO stations in the two nodes. And we've just illustrated that uh, on either side with the 
complete streets diagram and what that might look like and the um, active transportation um, uh, figures that we pulled from the municipal, uh, sorry, the uh, official plan. Uh, we've also observed that the, the, uh, that potential exists for the site's other main axis, uh, which moves north-south between the existing ravine system and uh, the Lake Ontario shoreline. So you can see that in, in um, uh, the figure to the left where the green concentric circle and the arrow pointing downward um, uh, uh, roughly kind of follows along the ravine network and the blue concentric circle with the arrow pointing upward um, shows uh, a, a kind of directional arrow moving away from the, the waterfront. And we also wanted to highlight the connection that we felt, uh, uh, the east-west connection um, that currently exists um, uh, along Lakeshore Road with the uh, multi-use uh, path and the Great Lakes waterfront trails, which we feel is a great uh, a great asset to the site in the area. Um, and, and finally, we wanted to mention the, the site's positioning within two principal civic green spaces, which are the Jack Darling Memorial Park uh, at the west, excuse me, and the Richards Memorial Park directly to the east. This slide illustrates the site's location amongst uh, multiple elements of the uh, City of Mississauga's Natural Heritage Net Network, including residential woodlands immediately adjacent to the site and the significant natural areas and wetlands to the south. Sorry, maybe I'm flipping through that too quickly. So you can see that um, illustrated to the right, um, where it's mentioning official plan, Schedule 3, Natural System. And moving on, we can see that the site is also adjacent to City of Mississauga's uh, Waterfront Parks Network. Um, and we felt that there's a, there's a chance to um, create an integration and enhancement of uh, Mississauga's parks and trails and waterfronts uh, network on our site. Or not on our site, but um, uh, using our site as, as a, a site's adjacency. So in, in summary um, of the, of the um, north-south uh, environmental um, network, uh, that is the second aspect of our spatial guidelines, um, uh, we feel that um, given these environmental and connective attributes, our uh, spatial planning approach foresees um, uh, an integration of enhanced environmental areas through um, improved uh, forms of uh, active transportation and, and public spaces. And um, we just want to highlight um, the, the, the center image, which is a, a map that highlights some of the uh, potentials um, for integrating these um, uh, networks. Um, so we, we foresee um, connections uh, to, with the ravine system and with the park uh, with the introduction of um, paths um, and, and signage and within those parks and seating areas, as well as um, a further, further development of the multi-use path system that's moving east-west along Lake Shore Road as well. So uh, in addition, we also foresee our proposal's ability to better help integrate the waterfront and surrounding ecosystems. And we, we believe this can be achieved uh, through improved connections and linkages with the park system, um, providing linkages with the existing ravine system, as well as across Lakeshore Road um, with, with uh, an enhanced pedestrian crossing, which you see on the image to the left. Um, and uh, also um, providing for enhanced uh, um, uh, areas to stop and, and rest while walking and hiking um, along the path network um, uh, as people make their way um, uh, through the park and to the, to the lakefront.
So as a result of the, that analysis um, with both the east-west um, corridor and, and development patterns and the north-south um, um, uh, environmental networks, um, we've, we've drafted a synthesis plan which illustrates four um, general uh, spatial planning guidelines for, for, for our proposal. Um, and just briefly, um, uh, the first is uh, to provide an innovative housing typology that enhances uh, uh, the quality of life in the neighborhood and articulates its character. Um, number two is uh, um, providing a building as a visual and physical landmark that leads, that leads the community through the park and to the waterfront. Uh, guideline three is the, um, uh, uh, to integrate a pedestrian friendly and transit supportive uh, urban design that enriches living and recreational opportunities of the community. And guideline four is uh, to provide an environmentally responsive um, building solutions that integrate the, 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 our, our proposed build form within the existing um, and planned for ecosystems. So um, uh, with, those, with those areas in mind, um, we're moving into section four of, uh, of our presentation, which will highlight and give an overview to the actual urban design guidelines and, and the architectural aspects of the proposal. And I'll hand it off to um, Craig Fordyce, who's an architect and planner on the file, and he is the president of uh, KFA Architects and Planners. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming out tonight, and uh, we'll, we'll get into the, uh, into the actual proposal now. Uh, Costa, if you could just mute yourself, I think we're getting some feedback. Um, and then, um, Flip to the first screen, please. Yeah, just bear with me. Uh, Costa, can you go to the first sc uh, screen, please? All right. So can everybody hear me okay? All right. Um, okay, so um, we're pretty excited about this project. Um, this is a very unique site, obviously, um, underutilized site uh, along uh, Lakeshore. Um, in Mississauga, um, what we're proposing here is a, a residential condominium. Um, the immediate area uh, in this in this location um, doesn't have a ton of architectural character. I think everybody uh, probably on the call is familiar with the area, and uh, through some of the the pictures that Costa showed of the existing context, there's um, across the street um, uh, predominantly it's the rear. Um, lots uh, with uh, six foot high wooden fences running along um, Lakeshore. Um, on the south side, uh, you know, it is uh, somewhat of a heavily treed area with uh, the parks and uh, a few a few frontages uh, in terms of uh, single family uh, residential homes. Uh, and then the uh, entrances to the Lauren Park Estates uh, to the west. Um, in terms of uh, this product, uh, you know, we feel that it's, uh, it's deserving of a very like, high quality uh, architecturally designed building. Um, and I hope that uh, that's something that you'll recognize uh, as we sort of go through uh, the project here tonight. Um, we feel that this is an important uh, typology to add to the area. It's adding a, a mix of uses uh, to an area that, you know, uh, is predominantly single family uh, homes uh, with some uh, uh, semis and some some townhouses and we feel that this uh the addition of of the condominium typology is uh is is important uh in this area to sort of round out that mix of uses um we we also feel that the the building in this location uh facilitates the use of existing transit and encourages uh you know sort of future transit along the area by bringing up um uh, the the density in the surrounding area 
Um, we also feel that this type of building will bring more uh, Mississauga residents to uh, to some important green spaces uh, in this area of Mississauga um, and uh, and provide that very important connection uh, to the lake, uh, which is, uh, is sort of a, an amazing connection at, at this point um, uh, through the adjacent park systems. Um, and we also feel that this typology uh, gives, uh, uh, you know, locals um, who already live in the area uh, the ability to, to age in place, which we feel is a, is a fundamental um, um, uh, benefit to this, this type, this typology of building. So, you can see that what we're proposing here is a 10 story building. It's approximately 32 meters tall. Uh, that's excluding the mechanical penthouse. Um, we have a, a floor space index, the FSI there of 4.28 um, and a unit count of 178 uh, units. Uh, we're um, looking at four levels of underground parking, uh, which gives us a, um, a 1.1 uh, space per unit uh, ratio. Um, you can see the setbacks listed there on the front. Uh, we're at um, 0.9 uh, on the east. We're at four. Um, uh, meters, this is all in meters and uh, on the west, we're at 9 meters uh, in terms of the amenity space. We're at about 5.6 square meters per unit. Uh, Costa, can you uh, flip to the next screen, please? So, um, just to give you a, a, an overview of the site here, this is the, this is the site plan. Um, this is a, a shot where you're looking at the top of the building. We're going to have the next slide, which will show us the ground floor plan. Um, so, if you're having a hard time understanding this, the building uh, has a lot of green space and, and that's, that's a good thing. Um, so, you can see that on the, on the roof of the building, there's um, uh, some green roofs and there's some terracing uh, that also has uh, uh, green elements on it, as well as some garden plots uh, on the upper level. Um, the, the site itself is triangular. Um, the entrance we have is uh, off of Lakeshore Road, um, somewhat to the middle of the site, um, and then uh, uh, coming through under the building. Uh, that's where you would have uh, vehicular um, uh, access and sort of the main sort of pedestrian access, um, uh, access for garbage trucks uh, and loading vehicles as well, um, sort of keeping that central to the site. Um, to the uh, east, uh, we have um, uh, uh, the park, obviously, and to the west, we have the, the ravine um, area. Um, you can see here in terms of the ground floor plan, um, we have units fronting onto Lakeshore, uh, and then we have some units also fronting on the south uh, eastern corner um, onto uh, the park. And um, you can see in the northeast corner, we have um, amenity spaces uh, that front also onto the park and to Lakeshore. Uh, and then we also have amenity spaces that uh, go out to the south near the ravine um, to the center of the site. Um, Costa, if you can switch to the next slide, please. Uh, so, we just have these slides up here to show um, it, it, we have a, a mix of, of unit types. We're just showing one floor plan right now. It's somewhat typical. Um, so, I don't want to bore you with going through multiple floor plans. Uh, these will be part of the application uh, as, we, as we go forward if people want to peruse those. Uh, however, it is proposed that we would have uh, a mix of unit sizes, including studios all the way to three bedrooms. Um, you know, providing that um, uh, sort of variety and mix of, of units uh, we feel is important. Um, we will be working with staff to, to make sure that those numbers uh, reflect what, uh, what staff wants to see um, as well relative to uh, unit mix. Um, in terms of the underground parking, right at the moment, we're proposing four levels of underground parking, and uh, we do have uh, two spaces at grade um, that are tucked um, um, uh, towards the center of the site uh, at the rear that would be used to facilitate uh, couriers as well as, uh, you know, pizza delivery, that kind of stuff. Um, Costa, if you can switch to the next slide, please. So, in terms of um, our uh, urban design guidelines and the spatial planning um, approach that we've used for the site, um, we just want to go through a couple slides that, that give you inform you in terms of what our design process is and sort of why this is is, is important and unique for this this particular site. Um, we figure that this site, re, you know, requires um, um, 
special attention and uh, we've analyzed it from a, a bunch of different perspectives. So um, in the first one, and this is, uh, this is with regard to the environmental constraints on the site, um, we've already had meetings with the uh, Credit Valley Conservation Authority. Um, we've been on site uh, with them and have preliminary stakeouts of uh, various features on the site. Um, for anyone that's uh, familiar with the site or the ravine um, uh, to the south, um, there is a, a top of bank, um, which has been staked out. Um, so you're going to see on our plans uh, a variety of lines that kind of look like uh, uh, squiggles to a certain extent. Um, but those lines all have uh, important meanings. And uh, the one that uh, I just want to point out uh, in this in this instance is uh, the most important one is the uh, buffer zone from the um, uh, uh, the tree drip line, which is what we've used to sort of create the massing uh, of the site in terms of a limit. Uh, uh, as we sort of move south, so this um, this tree drip line is uh, is 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 generally sort of marked out uh, by the conservation authority staff, um, and then uh, we've uh, we've had uh, um, uh, you know sort of a preliminary uh, survey of that and worked with an environmental consultant in terms of uh, determining um, uh, where that buffer zone from that tree drip line. Uh, would set the building. Uh, this is also uh, within within the, the context of the stable uh, top of slope. Another line that uh, is shown on our plans uh, that we respect uh, a buffer line from that as well. So uh, all of the environmental constraints are being considered um, and uh, and sort of uh, in, in, you know the, the the design is responding to these and uh, they will be part of the documentation that will be submitted as as a fulsome proposal. Uh, as the application proceeds. Um, Costa, if you can go to the next slide, please. Um, so, with regard to uh, um, internal circulation and um, uh, uh, sort of the pedestrian and uh, bike connectivity to this site, um, we have a bike lane already on, on, on Lakeshore, which is great. It's a multi-use path, actually, so not just a bike lane. There's a, there's a, a pedestrian uh, sidewalk as well. Um, we've taken that cue, um, you know, we think it's important uh, to, to sort of uh, understand the site that, you know, the ravine, you know, sort of provides a, um, uh, the potential for people to sort of walk through the ravine uh, if they were looking for that sort of not very natural off road type uh, uh, type, type experience. But then you have um, the parkland to the, uh, to the east, which um, provides for, you know, a more, um, you know, Park, park experience in terms of a walk coming from the multi-use path. Um, so we've paralleled those uh, within the site, um, providing, um, you can see the, the those two elements are the, the larger dotted lines, uh, but the smaller green lines show sort of uh, the proposed circulation within the site that connects out to the street at both the east and uh, west extents of the site to the, um, uh, to the multi-use path, as well as splitting, uh, bisecting uh, the building in the middle and connecting again to the to the to the lakeshore uh, path, and then you can see in the bottom um, sort of uh, southeast corner, um, you know, we've taken the path off into the um, into the park, which is our way of indicating that uh, you know that connection would be something uh, we we would like to propose. Um, you know, to uh, to the municipality as part of our as part of our application. Uh, Costa, if you can go to the next slide, please. So uh, this slide um, is is uh, is showing some yellow uh, um, volumes that you see uh, uh, sort of within the the outline of the building and the graphic, and um, and. Uh, what that's sort of indicating is uh, the frontage of the of the building and how it um, it engages uh, with the lakeshore corridor. Um, we felt that this was very important to spend some time on, and, and at this point in time, like get get uh, get some some design. You can see sort of in the in the um, in the rendering to the left. Uh, you know, we're showing some people with some some areas to sit and uh, and planters. And this is very conceptual at the moment, but we figure that this uh, this requires a lot of attention. It's something that you know we will be uh, you know in dialogue with the the city's urban designers and would want um, uh, you know feedback from the local public as well as to how this building really can be a place uh, along the street, along Lakeshore, and provide something that's that's somewhat non-existent right now in terms of uh, 
um, you know, uh, like a node at this point along the, the Lakeshore corridor, specifically along the, the bike trail. And, um, you know, we've, we've tried to animate the, the, the frontage uh, on, the, uh, on the eastern uh, facade. We have um, an amenity space that is, uh, is, is, would, would allow for, um, you know, the inside of the building to sort of come out to the street uh, in terms of uh, transparency through to the park. You'll see that a little bit better in some of the, the other renderings that we have. Uh, and then as you, you proceed west along the frontage of the building, we have at grade units. Uh, so these grade related units are sort of a nod to the existing sort of uh, residential typology uh, in the area, which is also grade related. So, um, you know, we've taken that into consideration and we think that having, you know, walk ups along um, uh, Lakeshore provides that pedestrian sort of friendly um uh, element and allows those unit owners if, if people uh you know uh, prefer to have a grade related unit where they can walk out their front door and and have a a, a stoop and 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 that sort of um um like i said a nod to the the existing typologies uh, predominantly in the area uh costa if you can go to the next slide please Um, so, another thing that uh, this does, like in terms of uh, animating these facades and, and having residential at grade um, uh, and the building sort of in general, it, uh, it provides for um, uh, safety uh, in the area. Uh, for those that are familiar with SEPTED, crime prevention through environmental design, um, this is uh, uh, sometimes called eyes on the park um, uh, in terms of the concept where you provide for, um, you know, sort of uh, a building of this sort uh, where you have uh, residential adjacent to public space and it provides for a much safer environment. Um, you know, people, uh, you know, tend to uh, shy away from doing bad things where uh, people could be watching them. So um, in this instance, uh, we feel that we've uh, taken that into consideration and specifically along the, uh, the east facade, um, um, those units would face onto onto the park and provide that uh, that eyes on the park. Um, Costa, if you can go to the next slide, please. So, with regard to uh, our materiality and how the building massing works, um, you know, we've created a, a you know what we what we feel is a very beautiful building that uses a two tone materiality. Um, our base is uh, predominantly brick. Um, that brick is. Um, um, is a is a traditional type brick that is a nod to the existing, um, you know, sort of brick facades that you see throughout this neighborhood. Um, the site, because of its its odd shape, I think yeah. people can understand that it's it's not um, uh, very, let's say, kind toward a like a typical rectilinear building. So um, in our initial designs, and we have met with staff already um, through a preliminary consultation. Some of the feedback was that there was a lot of sharp angles, and uh, it was something that we listened to, uh, you know, right away and took back um, to see how we could we could deal with that in a in a way that would really um, provide uh, you know a, a nice aesthetic. So there is a curvilinear aspect to this building. Um, the corners have all been softened. Um, I think we're using a material that's very appropriate for the area. Um, you can see that there's um, the corners are, are curvilinear, but we've also taken the curvilinear aspect into the facade, bringing it down so it touches lightly uh, to the ground and provides this interesting arcing aesthetic. Um, and when you look at the upper part of the building, uh, the materiality changes. So the building has a base, and then it has a, has a um, what we consider the, the the shoulders of the building, um, the upper part, and uh, that's predominantly. Um, uh, uh, metal cladding uh, with a, um, a window wall uh, treatment, which is more typical in terms of uh, uh, condominiums. Um, and it provides a, a bit of a lighter aesthetic at the top and, and more of a solid foundation at the bottom. Um, Costa, if you can switch to the next slide, please. So, um, one of the things that Costa talked about quite a bit was the, and it's, it's a very important point, is the um, is the is the green integration with the building. And you know, I think everybody understands that the site has a, a quite a few trees on it, um, and the surrounding area also is 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 very heavily treed. Our um, intention on on this site is that the trees that are are taken 
down on the site are replaced um, as part of the design uh, along uh, Lakeshore and then along the rear sort of reinforcing the ravine edge um, uh, with, with new trees. Uh, we've had an arborist out to the site. Um, we're getting uh, de more details in terms of um, uh, you know, what the, the conditions of trees are. There are trees on the site that are in, in fairly poor condition, there are some that are healthy, uh, but this will all be documented and all be part of our proposal and um, and rest assured uh, the re replacement trees will uh, be part of be part of the design. Now, you'll see a lot of uh, green on the building. Uh, the intention is to provide for um, a mix of uh, private boxes that uh, that uh, unit owners can use um, sort of off of their balconies, uh, as well as um, uh, uh, boxes that would uh, planting boxes that would be uh, maintained by the condominium um, to provide for an aesthetic that uh, is somewhat what we call biophilic in terms of its uh, uh, its providing greening of the building. Um, on the roof, you'll see uh, on the mechanical penthouses. There's two green roofs uh, that cover the whole mechanical penthouse. This would be um, used, uh, you know, uh, largely to reduce heat island effect and provide providing for um, um, stormwater management and uh, and uh, promoting species uh, such as uh, uh, local indigenous using local indigenous species to uh, promote habitat for you know birds and bees and all those good things. Um, we're also proposing you can see there's sort of like a, a brown um, uh, line sort of along the uh, the top of the building on the south side. Uh, those are proposed to be planting boxes that would be uh, used for garden plots. And um, the idea there is that the garden plots uh, would also provide, um, you know, uh, kind of a buffer to the edge of the the, the building at the roof level, um, which keeps uh, residents back from the edge um, and mitigates overlook as well as creates a, a, a beautiful soft green edge. Um, Paul, Steph, you could uh, go to the next next slide. So uh, uh, our eighth guideline. Um, in terms of step backs and frame views is uh, is something uh, important for tonight's discussion. Um, you can see sort of on the um, uh, the building that there are a number of step backs uh, and the step backs provide uh, a variety of terraces for uh, different units. Um, what what we're we're doing sort of within the step backs is is providing uh, planters at the edge, which keeps red residents back, which mitigates overlook. Um, on the uh, upper um, part of the building, and I'm going to show it to you here, but we have a better slide that sort of illustrates what what the architecture does to aim views in this particular uh, building. But on the upper floors, you can see that there's somewhat of a fin. Um, it's it's just the shape of the units and the balconies. Um, we're using that to direct uh, views um, so that uh, we can actually focus views um, for, and, and this is uh, this is actually the, uh, the slide that that relates to. So you can see there's a view from the 10th story um, looking out toward the lake, um, and uh, you can see the adjacent um, home uh, to uh, to the to the west. And uh, with the use of of, of uh, the architecture, we can start to to aim those views to mitigate um, uh, overlook uh, uh, from the building to uh, the adjacent sites. If you can just go back, uh, Costa, to um, uh, this yeah this 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 slide. So this slide shows um, a section through the uh, the the property. Um, it crosses over Lakeshore, so you can see where Lakeshore is uh, is is. If you look at the light gray, sort of, um, it shows where Lakeshore is in the section, and above that, there's a 45 degree angular plane. Uh, that plane is taken from the um, the rear property line, approximately uh, at the extent of the right of way uh, for Lakeshore on the north side, and it extends up um, over the site. So the building is under that angular plane. You can also see that we've put some, um, uh, like, a bit of a scale uh, along the bottom. So that uh, from the rear of the house, uh, the property to the north, to the face of the building is approximately uh, 50, 65 meters. Um, and then if you look to the uh, to the right of the slide, you have approximately 70 meters from uh, the north facade of the uh, east west east west 
east west leg of the uh, of the building uh, to the closest um, uh, residents to the uh, to the west to the southwest. Um, if you can go to the next uh, slide again, Costa. Right. So one of the things that we want to just point out in this particular um, uh, slide is that this is somewhat of the worst scenario, uh, case scenario in terms of overlook for this particular building. Um, this is obviously taken now um, in the winter months, so there's no uh, foliage on the trees. So there is, um, uh, I would consider it a minor impact uh, relative to the uh, to the home uh, to the to the southwest there. Um, however, that canopy uh, fills in pretty um, pretty much in the in the summer, so uh, that that overlook would be mitigated um, uh, uh, largely. If you want to just go back to the uh, previous slide there, Costa, um, I just want to make that point in terms of uh, the northern properties as well. Um, uh, for those uh, who live to the north, um, the backyards of the houses. Uh, um, on the northern side of, of Lakeshore are, are largely treed along the property line. There's a lot of, um, of uh, coniferous trees, which uh, provide for um, uh, much uh, view mitigation just, just generally. Um, so the overlook into the uh, rear yards uh, uh, is, is, is very minor um, relative to the height of this building, the width of the, the right of way, as well as the, uh, the the heavy foliage that's uh, uh, provided by the trees uh, along that uh, along that frontage. Um, Costa, if you can flip through the next one and the next one. Um, yeah, so just in terms of this building as a landmark, again, um, you know, the stretch of uh, of Lakeshore uh, between the two nodes of, of Clarkson and Port Credit, you know, it's a uh, it's a uh, you know, it's a it, it, it's a beautiful drive here. Obviously, you have lots of uh, greenery and trees. Um, however, there is uh, it is somewhat lacking in in terms of architectural character, and and we're really jumping at that opportunity to provide something here that we feel is a stunning building and something that would be an asset. Um, it would it would represent the quality of this area and uh, and provide housing. We think to uh, to Mississauga residents. Um, so that they can enjoy the area and bring uh, the density of this area up a little bit. Um, this isn't the sort of project that's setting, a, you know, an odd precedent for the area, just in terms of there's not a lot of these sites around and that, that, that's where this is, is somewhat unique. And I think it's an opportunity um, for, uh, for a building of, of this quality and, and this nature to really succeed. And uh, and provide that sort of landmark uh, element um, along along the corridor. Uh, Costa, if you can flip to the next one. So we just wanted to show you uh, the sh the sun shadow study. Um, these um, are are just two. Uh, generally, a, sh a sun shadow study is a little little bit longer, and I'll just spend a, a minute here to sort of explain what it's showing. Um, so June 22nd, 21st is, is the shadow study to the left. September 21st is the shadow study to the, uh, to the right. Um, if you look at June, uh, you can see in the upper left-hand corner, the shadow in the morning at, uh, at 918. And then you sort of, re you read, like you'd be reading a book, you read left uh, to, to right. So you go June 8, uh, sorry, 918, then 1018, then 1118. And you can follow sort of, if you kind of read it like a book, how that shadow is, is working in that set of nine slides. Um, so, you know, we do have uh, shadow on Lakeshore at that point in time uh, in the summer. Um, and then the shadow uh, sort of runs along Lakeshore uh, and then it comes around to the park uh, later in the evening, but there's, there's no shadow impact on any of the surrounding residential uh, properties. Now in September, um, in the morning at 918, uh, because the shadows get longer, um, in the fall and the spring, this would be very similar in March too. If we were to do this for March uh, 21st, it would be somewhat uh, similar. Um, you do have uh, some impact in the morning and at 918. Um, that impact drops away uh, around 1018, and then we're on to Lakeshore um, uh, by 1118, and then the, the shadow uh, makes its way 
um, over toward the park um, for the remainder of the day. So we would consider that this is is very minor with regard to shadow impact um, on the on the surrounding uh, built form. Um, and then Costa, if you just go to the last slide, um, I think I've talked enough. So um, we're happy to take your questions. Uh, you know, we're really uh, proud of of this building, and 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 we hope that uh, residents can um, um, can get behind this as well. Um, we do understand that it is a unique property and uh, we're really interested to hear uh, your take on it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with that, we'll start the next hour for uh, questions and comments from the community. Um, so do that. you can raise your hand at the bottom of uh, the WebEx app and then I'll invite you to um, share your thoughts. So I'm going to start with Bill Johnston. Bill, you're on the stage and you can unmute yourself. Bill, we cannot hear you. There, there we go. go. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, I'm going to make some general comments and I'm going to do a quick, a quick uh, screen share. I'm not going to take much time because I think there are a lot of people who have been watching the chat go by and there are a lot of people, particularly on the east side of Whittier, uh, that have some, I think, very valid points to make based on what I've seen on the chat and discussions we've had internally. First of all, my name is Bill Johnston. I'm president of the Lauren Park Estates Association. And um, let me just do a quick... Screen share here. Okay, you've all seen this and, and a lot of what has already been said by KFA, um, uh, I appreciate and, and un I do understand that they are experts in what they do. Um, unfortunately, um, we had some trouble finding out who was involved in this. And I'm glad they mentioned Mr. Atkinson's name because he was indeed the individual, a lawyer from Etobicoke and behind a numbered company. I uh, also appreciate you mentioning who your client is because that was uh, somewhat opaque uh, to begin with. And uh, the fact that uh, we'd actually like to have more information as this project goes on uh, as to their experience in this. Um, uh, KFA certainly has that experience. I, we don't question that, uh, but the client has been, as I said, somewhat opaque. Uh, so I'm gonna move through that fairly quickly. Uh, zoning, you covered fairly well. We've already looked at that fairly carefully uh, with the zoning change from R2 exception 5 to RA3 uh, being required. And just to remind the listeners, it's 11 stories. Um, they say 10, uh, but it's actually 11 with the mechanical units on the roof. It's 177 or 178 units. We actually heard it was 180 units. Whatever the number is, it's a lot of units. And the total square footage, and this is coming off their data uh, of 224,580 square feet. The height, by the way, which I'm seeing on the chat being an issue, uh, is uh, 35.2 meters is 115 and a half feet. And parking, of course, for 197 cars. And I'll show you the who uh, some of them on the line may not have seen that. So Mississauga zoning bylaws 0225 uh, 227 are in effect. Uh, with the general provisions, and I'm not going to bore anybody with that, other than to say uh, that to the residents of LPA who are online uh, is we can send this presentation out to you afterwards. Uh, and the links read the zoning information are on slide 10. Uh, the site plan you've seen, uh, frankly, it's it's a large, large building. And I'll get to the frontage and some of that in just a minute, but I just thought I'd blow that up a bit because it was a bit hard uh, to see on the KFA presentation. Um, uh, I, sorry, sorry, Bill, can I just interrupt? I think sure. you're, show, you're, you're, you're thinking you're showing us the screen and I can't see it. I don't know if anybody else can see it, um, but I believe um, you are showing us the screen. So I would like to see, see that if possible. Um, it, I think that the share maybe didn't go through when you, when you tried to share it. Uh, okay, I don't know, hold on. Uh, Ryan, if, if, if there's something Oh, here it comes. Okay, okay. got it. Okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. I, I, sorry, Ryan. I'm not used to WebEx. I'm used to Zoom and rest of them, but not WebEx. 
So yeah. I can uh, just skip back real quick uh, because we've already kind of covered it verbally. Um, this was the slide and where we had to do some digging to find out who was actually behind this project. Uh, but now that we know, we'd like more information, in fact, on who the actual client is. Uh, that's the site plan that was already shown to you by KFA, just a little larger version. Um, there are the, there's the data also shared by KFA uh, in their original um, uh, uh, input to you. And by the way, I, uh, two uh, things I'd like to comment on appreciate uh, uh, Councillor Tejo and Ryan uh, for doing this so early in the process. It really gives us a chance to comment on it, uh, to be educated on it, and hopefully to educate the people that are behind it. Uh, because quite frankly, I think that is a necessary based on what I've seen so far. Uh, moving on quickly, um, I was surprised to hear about uh, how well, this apparently fits in with the neighborhood uh, because um, what I did today, and it was a lousy day to take pictures, but uh, we went out and took some pictures today um, up up and down the immediate area, uh, one from Whittier to the, uh, to the site, west from Richards Park to the site, and also on the north side. And basically it's all solid greenery. And um, I also have trouble when I hear trees being cut uh, and then other trees being replanted. Unfortunately, the replanted trees uh, don't become mature trees for another 20 years. And I don't know about the rest of you, but I probably won't be around to see it. So uh, moving on, uh, on the infrastructure, but I just wanted to uh, basically take a look at this and say, does, and one of you from KFA made the comment that this fits within the neighborhood. Well, not so sure uh, based on what I'm seeing here. Um, and based on what I'm seeing in the chat, and I'm going fairly quickly here so that all the people on the chat can have their own chance to, to comment on this. But this is, frankly, does not belong here. You've got a park system, and we went through this in uh, when uh, we got into the whole cluster worm situation uh, of the, uh, the string of parks that are absolutely phenomenal, uh, starting in Port Credit at Rhododendron Park and going through Richards, of course, right next to this project. Uh, frankly, LPE, which is well known as a home to a major Carolinian, Carolinian forest stand and right into Jack Darling. And to plunk this thing in the middle of basically a significant park system, frankly, in our mind, just doesn't work. And uh, I'm sure there's some others uh, that are going to have that comment as well. In fact, some of them perhaps even from Crozier and Balboa, not too sure. Uh, but anyway, that that picture, uh, frankly, um, I think developed a lot of passion, at least, and my phone's been coming off the hook for the last three days. Uh, so the environment on the infrastructure, um, that frankly wasn't dealt with as I heard uh, the, pres the presentation. And I know that uh, Mississauga and other cities are under a lot of pressure uh, from federal and provincial levels on housing, zoning, and funding. And due to the rapid growth and other large developmental projects, um, infrastructure has been a, a challenge for Mississauga. In fact, we were subject to that. In fact, uh, your site would have been subject to it with a major water main break about a year ago uh, that flooded Lakeshore uh, to the point that it was impassable. Um, uh, impassable. And we, uh, of course, in Lake uh, LPE and other parts of the, uh, the uh, Lakeshore were without water for some period of time. I think the bright, water, uh, the bright Water Project at Lakeshore and Mississauga Road uh, has huge impact on the appetite for infrastructure. And while I'm sure engineering studies have been done and approvals have been obtained, what you don't know is the actual impact that will have when it's at full, full volume and full use. The environmental impact, I'm, uh, we're happy to see uh, Credit Valley involved in this, Credit Valley Conservation. We work with them on an ongoing basis. Uh, in fact, we work with, in conjunction with them uh, in relation to some specific uh, issues that have um, been a concern to us. Um, the full occupancy was, you know, of 177 units. I don't know what the average number of people would be. Call it two, maybe three. Uh, will put significant strain on the water, sewer, road, and other systems. Uh, that uh, are already overtaxed, and I mentioned the Lake Shore leak, uh, leak. CVC certainly needs to be involved, and, and clearly they are, and uh, we have a lot of faith in, in, uh, in what they do and what they, deserve, uh, what they do. 
just in quick conclusion here, these two designs were have been floating around apparently. I frankly I do not know where they kind of came from. One of uh, our board members forwarded it to uh, to me. Uh, but frankly, this kind of thing, we're not against progress. If you stand in the middle of the road and say we're against progress, you're going to get run over. We know that. So we understand and the people have a right to have property, to sell property, et cetera. Um, but not at the expense of um, basically, uh, sorry to say this, ruining a neighborhood uh, that has been uh, well established and um, uh, with single family homes and here are two alternatives. The other thing I would ask you to look at is something that Councillor Tejo has been behind uh, really since day one and the council has now voted in favor of uh, through the mayor using her strong powers uh, and that's fourplexes. Uh, that, those would be al alternatives that we could actually look at um, and I, we would need to look at it. I'm not saying we'd approve it. Uh, not that we have approval, we don't. Uh, hopefully we have some influence here. So uh, there is just a, a list of uh, some of the links for whoever wants this uh, package. And, but frankly, folks um, understand KFA is doing their job and they are obviously very good at it. But to say it fits the environment, I'm sorry, it doesn't. And if this was a, a minor variance hearing, it would be rejected because it doesn't fit either test one or test two. I know we're talking about zoning, not minor variances, uh, but frankly, I think the analogy works. Uh, I thank you.